Hello and welcome to my channel. My channel is dedicated to exposing watchtower lies, deception and cover-ups. My name is Malfi and I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses for over 30 years. I served as a regular pioneer for 10 of those years. I was first contacted in the door-to-door -door ministry in 1987 and I finally left the organisation in 2022. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Edith Starmiller and why her book, Occult Theocracy, is so precious to us. And um, it's something that everybody should be interested in what she has to say in this book about secret societies. Now, Edith Starmiller was born on the 16th of July in 1887. Her father, William Starmiller II, was her, was, was her father and her mother was Edith Caroline Warren. Her family pedigree on both sides was impeccable. Her father, um, William, was a Harvard graduate. He was a prominent lawyer. He became a very prominent industrialist. And her, her mother, um, Edith Caroline, came from a very, very wealthy background. Her, her uncles were in government. They were all, they were prominent architects. On her mother's side, she was related to the Vanderbilt family. Her own family married into the Astor family. So Edith was a socialite. She was a very, very high born woman and she mixed in a very, very high society. So what she has to say, what she found out is worth looking into and I spent some time researching because of what she said in her book about um, the international Bible students or Brusselites as she called them as they were known when she wrote her book. Now Edith was expected to get married and you know keep the money flowing around the circles in which she lived uh, you know to be a good wife and uh, you know produce the next heir and all the rest that these highborn ladies uh, did but our Edith was a bit of a rebel she was she had a, a very inquiring mind she reminds me a bit of myself you know, that she wanted to know why there was so much social unrest in the world, what was causing the problems. And she wanted to understand the world in which she lived and moved. And so with the aid of her uncle, Lloyd Warren, who was himself a very very prominent figure in American society and very wealthy. It seems that he and his niece were quite interested in the way the world was going and they didn't like what they were seeing. Now I believe her uncle was a Freemason as many of these people were. They all were part of the, as my father called it, the old boys network. And so these secret societies and things like that, they, they, they are all what they used to keep people in place and the wealth where it needed to be, as they saw it. So these secret societies, although they've been on the go, like the Knights Templar from the Middle Ages and things like that, many of them 
came became very active in the 1800s which is around the time when there was um, all these Bible societies and things being formed. The Seventh-day Adventists and other things were all coming around about that time. And so Edith, living at that time, decided that instead of getting married, she was going to do research and become an activist herself and to find out what was going on in society. And this was virtually unheard of for a woman of that time. Her parents seemed to allow her to, to do this because she lived at home um, with her parents unmarried. Um, she she didn't get married until she was 33 years old when she'd finished this 10 year project that she wanted to do and she wanted to she wanted people to know what was going on in her day she was a revolutionary woman and both Edith and her, husband, and her uncle, who helped her with this investigation, both died in mysterious circumstances. Her uncle was said to have sleptwalked, sleepwalked, out of an open window and fell to his death from his New York um, high-rise apartment. And Edith went in for minor surgery at the age of 45 and died as a result of it and they said it was very suspicious the way she died so maybe you know these things we're told are coincidences and you know how many people who get a black eye uh you know involved in things they shouldn't be say oh i walked into a cupboard door or or whatever and um, you know we all know it's not true so whatever happened to her and her uncle may be for revealing far too much in her book. Maybe that was what was behind it. But in in honour of what she did and what she reveals to us about secret societies and what she says about the International Bible Students, it's a very small chapter in her book but the very fact that it is mentioned in a book that is about secret societies is very telling and she also reveals in her book at the back of the book there is a chart of prominent people including the Rothschilds and others and included among them is Charles Taze Russell who um, is marked off as being a Freemason. So, you know, there's been much talk about whether Charles Russell was a Freemason or not. There's, there's not a great deal of evidence because it's been covered extremely well. But what she says in this book is very revealing. And I do believe that what she says is, is the truth. It has been dismissed. You know, if you look up Edith Storm Miller, um, on Wikipedia, it tells you that she was a, 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 in, a American British socialite and cons author and co conspiracy theorist. Well, when you see that those words conspiracy theorist, it usually, uh, in, uh, when you're talking about people of her station, uh, it is to cover up the, and stop people looking, as we said about labelling people, it, you know, people think, oh, conspiracy theories and turn the page over. But what she says and what she's done in her book is very, very telling. Now I've got um, her book up on my laptop. I'm just gonna sign in. And she, gives thanks to her uncle Lloyd for assisting her 
in her work. So he's the one who walked out of the window. Now I'm just going to put my copy down and I'm going to just read to you the foreword of her book. Her book is called Occult Theocracy. Now you can get this book online, you can download it as a PDF and read it completely free. If you're interested in what's going on behind the scenes, if you want to know about the New World Order and how things are progress, you can see from what she wrote to what we see today and how things have progressed is exactly what she said would take place in her book. So I'm going to quote to you what her book says. She says, this book makes no claim to literary, literary merit. It is simply a work of research and documentation, giving evidence and facts which I trust will help the reader in drawing his or her own conclusions. In the course of my researches as an international political investigator into the causes of social unrest, I have probed the depths of infamy which now surrounds not, only, not ours only, but also the next generation, whose right to lead a decent life should be as good as was ours. As a woman of the world, I have witnessed things the existence of which I did not suspect, and I have realised that due to my protected position in life, that they should never have been expected to have come to my knowledge. Let me tell every woman, however much protected, whether dairymaid dairy or duchess, that the safeguards with which she imagines to be thrown around herself are but a mirage of the past. Her own and her children's future are at the mercy of those forces, the activities of which it has been my business for the last 10 years to follow as one of a group of investigators. Today, most of the good people are afraid to be good. They strive to be broad-minded and tolerant. It is fashionable to be tolerant, but mostly tolerant of evil. And this new code has reached the proportions of demanding intolerance of good. The wall of resistance to evil has thus been broken down and no longer affords protection to those who, persecuted by evildoers stand in need of it. Worse still, there are cases wherein virtuous people's good name is relentlessly flinched from them, but no effort will be made by the presumed good people to, to rally to their defence. Happy are they if they themselves can discover the cause of their ruin, material or moral, partial or total. She goes on, in offering this book to the public, I have endeavoured to expose some of the means and methods used by a secret world, one might almost say an underworld, to penetrate, dominate and destroy not only the so-called upper classes, but also the better portion of all classes. There are those who feel confident that if they refrain from joining any society or group and en avoid entanglement, no harm can befall them. To such, let me say that situations can be and are created for innocent dupes every day and wrecked homes are the direct result. Neither fortune nor a blameless life led, as it were, in an island of strict virtue in the midst of a tumultuous sea of evil 
spells security. Irrefutable evidence of a partial example of underworld tyranny has come into my possession. The victim's guilt was her reluctance to step from virtue into the mire of evil which surrounds her. Moreover, she was intolerant of evil and sought to oppose and destroy it. The case of her persecution at the hands of her foes is complete. She belonged to what is termed society, as did also some of the other actors in this bewildering drama. The world, social, financial, legal, and shall we say also the underworld, leaving to this word its generally accepted literally meaning, knows them. So many jackals and hides stalk about unsuspectingly amongst in our midst. Sorry. She says, from such an example, I have been led to the conclusion that, among others, three factors can help one from being completely destroyed by the combined forces of that underworld. And that is, one, a flawless life. Two, independent means and real friends. All three of which must be backed by a fearless determination to fight evil on all points of the Masonic compass. In these days when apparently vice triumphs and virtue must be penalised, it may be well for all of us to fight the undertow by which our children may be dragged under and must necessarily and must of necessity perish. Vice rings and secret societies form but one vortex into which youth is drawn and destroyed, whilst the good people, because of their ignorance, look on helplessly in despair. It is for their instruction that this book has been written. Its compilation has taken several years and had it not been for the generous efforts of one of my friends, Mami de Charmet, and of several other persons, I would never have been able to complete the task which I set out to accomplish. What must concern all of us now is the protection of decency, or in other words, equal rights for such as are not vice adepts. This book is not complete. It will never be complete. But for the present, it must remain as a study of the root conditions which have led to present day subversive upheavals and the overthrow of the principles of Christian civilization and it's signed Edith Queenborough. Now, Edith Storm Miller married Lord Queenborough of England and she moved to live in the United Kingdom. So that is why she refers to herself as Edith Queenborough. And so her book I'm just going to sorry, um I'm just going to read you uh volume a uh, book's written in two volumes, a uh, volume one. It starts with the religion of the secret, the meaning of occultism, Brahmanism, Zoroastrianism. Egyptian ascetism, Judaism, the Pharisees, the pagan mysteries, the Druids, Christianity, Manichism, witchcraft, the Gnostics, Orthodox Islam, unorthodox Islam, the Assassins, the Knights Templar, the Knights of Malta, the Rosicrucians, the Waldenses,
the Meridian line, the order, the order of religious Freemasons, the Anabaptists, the Grand Lodge of England, the Gospel Resolution. And so there are some of the things in Volume 1. In Part 2, she discusses there the Illuminati of Spain, the Order of the Jesuits, the Defenders of the Roman Catholics, the Asian Order of Hibernians. And then she goes on to discuss the Royal Order of Scotland, different six Illuminatis of different parts of the world. She discusses the United Irishmen, the Orange Society, the Protestant and Masonic Society of the Orange Order, which is something that is practiced or goes on in Ireland. And she discusses associations of the 19th century of the Knights Templar. She goes on to discuss several different religious orders, including the Mormons, the Ku Klux Klan, the Anabaptists, and starting on page 539, she discusses the Russellites and the International Bible Students as they were known then, because they didn't take on the name Jehovah's Witnesses until um, 1935, which was after her death. So she talks about the Illuminati and things like that, all different things. And also she talks about spiritualism. She also discusses the Masonic and Pagan symbolism that they use to communicate. And um, in her book, there is a, py a pyramid and the all seeing eye. So these are things that we've seen. I've showed you them in my video about the Danish um, Convention Center that when viewed from the air can be seen the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. And we know that the pyramid and the all-seeing eye was uh, on the grave of Charles Taze Russell. So, uh, you know, the, the pyramid um, and, uh, you know, I was looking in the Live Forever book the other day and, of course, I've seen the picture of the thief that's running away and in his hand is um, a necklace which contain, which is a pyramid and on it is the all-seeing eye. So these things are interlinked with what the Watchtower is involved with and the very fact that Edith Starr Miller wrote about the Russellites in a book about secret societies, the Illuminati and the New World Order is very sim is very a significant thing. So I'm just going to go, because I think it's page 539. And it brings up there, I'm going to show you that it talks about the, the Russellites. It talks about the Russellites. Maybe I couldn't show it that way, but I'll maybe be able to do it this way. On my laptop, it's struggling a little bit. But it's there. She's talking about the Russellites. So I am on the page of the book. I don't have a book, but I do have it online. Like I said, you can get it free. Now... This is what she says about the Russellites. I'm going to just bring it up. It says founded in 1879. 
The International Bible Student Movement was founded by Charles Taze Russell, who was born in 1852 and died in 1916, with the object chiefly of attracting the lower middle class intelligentsia of Christian communities, such as clerical workers, teachers, servants, and persons not accessible to direct, direct forms of propaganda. In America, the movement has had great influence among the Negro element. In 1879, Russell founded the Watch Tower, of which he was the sole editor. The Russellite teaching, drawing its own arbitrary conclusions and proclaiming them as final, professes to prove from biblical sources that all Christian churches are evil and corrupt. That that. The time of the Gentiles ended in 1914 and that the Jews must henceforth reign supreme over the world. It also elaborates on occult dogma alleged to be based on biblical precedents. It condemns the Roman Catholic Church referring to Rome in true esoteric Masonic style as Babylon and disposes of the Pope and his entire hierarchy as agents of the Antichrist, who are doomed to extinction according to the familiar Masonic formulas of Albert Pike, Mazzini and Co. We are further told on biblical authority. Interpreting the following words in Revelation chapter 2, 24 as they speak, that this means that Satan is a name applicable to Rome in describing its characteristics. The Protestant (laughs) Episcopal and other Christian churches in which Russell's graphic language or the harlot daughters of the Roman church have committed fornication which term he interprets as meaning the union of church and state, so bitterly opposed by the Jews in all country. Fair no better at the pen of this prolific writer, who predicts that under the visible rulership of the ancient worthies, those Gentiles who still believe in Christ will acknowledge his reign as an invisible one while submitting as Christians to all the hardships that the Jewish lords might choose to put upon them. So, and it goes on a little bit further, but I thought that was very, very interesting in what it says. That the religion was set up, she says, to promote the Jewish faith, which is quite interesting because Charles Chase Russell was a Zionist. The watchtower was called Zion's Watchtower. And so she knew what the teachings were at the time when she wrote this book. She knew what was believed by these Bible students and what was being taught by Charles Taze Russell. She goes on to say, finish the chapter by saying that John Rutherford is the present uh, president of this society. So I think it's quite interesting that she says that the religion was set up to influence the Gentiles who still believed in Christ, she says, to acknowledge his reign as an invisible one, and while submitting as Christians to all the hardships of the Jewish law. Now, isn't that what Jehovah's Witnesses are experiencing today? They are under the law of the governing body. And as I said, they are, they 
are ruled by these rules and laws that keep them exhausted. All the hardships, it says, that the, that the Jewish laws may choose to put on them and they put more and more and more hardships on Jehovah's Witnesses. I wonder what Edith would think if she saw the organisation today and all its rules and regulations and that it's a law unto itself because it is a secret society. I have said this before. And when you become a proper researcher and not just somebody who just wants to sit and, you know, slag off the watchtower, you need to understand what is behind it. I've never been happy just to sit here and slay off the watchtower. What I want people to understand and my subscribers to understand that the watchtower is also a secret society. It is like the Freemasons and many of its members, the, the governing body are all Freemasons. Many of the elders are Freemasons. People have spoken of being shaking hands on the rival and, and have had the Masonic handshake. You've got the governing body with wearing Masonic rings. And Christy Ann has got a video on her channel where Stephen Lett is wearing the, the Masonic uh, compass ring. Now, we know these rings can flip over. The top table will flip over and just show a, a plain gold side to it. Now, whether he forgot to turn it over or whether he did it on purpose and, and you know, thought that no one would notice, but she noticed it. She's got a picture of him wearing it and you can see clearly it is a Masonic ring. And so these things are linked to what Edith Storm Miller said in her book and this is why I would say to you if you want to do a bit of research yourself you can just google occult theocracy Edith Star Miller and but a free PDF and it will bring it up you can read it on your phone on your computer you don't have to read all the book but you'll get the gist of what she's saying and what she foretold has come to, absolutely. And the fact that she died the way she died and her uncle died the way he died, suggests to me that people weren't happy with what she revealed or what he, he helped her with. You know, she, she died as a result of the research that she did. And she tells us that Charles Taze Russell was a 33 degree Freemason. So I want to leave it there. This is a video that is quite unusual and it may not be well watched by many people, but I do think it's important for me to bring this out as part of my video series. So I want to thank you all for watching. And if you did like the, the video, please give it a like. It's not for everybody. But as I say, I'm trying to help people to see what's going on behind the scenes and not just um, sit talking about the evils the Watchtower's done to people, which is, which is bad enough. But to understand why it's operating as it is, you need to know the background. So that's why I've done it this way. I want to thank you for watching. And until the next time, I'll say bye. <laughs>